Today, I want to talk about how the combination of the current banking crisis and the profitability of GameStop is causing the squeeze. I want to explain how the meme stock basket is the main hedge against the current financial turmoil and how it will end with a number of hedge funds being liquidated. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Spence tweeted saying, this is the pre-market action that I wanted to see. Someone has just been caught with their pants around their ankles big time on the GameStop shorts, and it's going to reverb through the entire meme stock basket big time. He said once again, Mark Coder's exposure of these absolutely corrupt banks and their downfall was the catalyst for this move, which I think is also combined with the new profitability of GameStop. Obviously in the aftermarket last night and the pre-market this morning, we saw a massive run up in GameStop due to the newfound profitability. I do wanna give you a little bit of a warning on this later, but first let's continue with GameStop's new profits. Dave Lauer tweeted saying incredible. GameStop is up over 50% on a surprise profit and excellent earnings report. Biggums repeated saying that many people thought the fundamentals did not matter because this is not a fundamental play. But obviously what we're seeing is that fundamentals and the current banking crisis are triggering the squeeze. Obviously, as a result of GameStop turning profitable, it's completely destroyed the short thesis on GameStop. And I also think that AMC won't be far behind. And now even analysts like Wedbush Securities are raising their price targets on GameStop because they know that shorts are screwed. If there's now no reason for these shorts to continue shorting because GameStop and AMC are going to turn profitable, it will end in many of the smaller hedge funds closing out of their short positions. Now obviously the larger, more illegally operating hedge funds won't want to close out of their shorts because they know that closing out would cause a squeeze and bankrupt their fund. And therefore, even though GameStop has turned profitable and AMC will soon be turning profitable as well, the larger hedge funds are still going to try and hang on to their short positions, even though it makes no financial sense. But obviously with more and more smaller hedge funds closing out of their short positions as the price of GameStop and AMC steadily increase, it will cause more and more pressure on those shorts. And especially when you combine that pressure with the current banking crisis, you end up with GameStop, Bitcoin, and the entire meme stock basket being hedges against the current systemic collapse. And speaking on why AMC will likely soon be turning profitable as well is because AMC may have developed a new revenue stream partnering up with GameStop. GameStop tweeted saying, are you planning on seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie? Well, take advantage of this deal. Get a ticket through Fandango when you spend $75 or more on Mario merchandise at GameStop. You can get up to a $15 total ticket value to use at any cinema, likely an AMC theater, when you spend money at GameStop. But now onto this warning. Even though we saw GameStop running up in the after hours yesterday and the pre-market this morning, it seems like GameStop, AMC and Bed Bath & Beyond have all been attacked in the early hours of the market today. Mr. David Neo tweeted saying they've already planned out this run and they're already calling it an accidental squeeze. He said they want you to buy March 24th calls so your brokers can take part in illegal activities and make your calls worthless. He said, don't be fooled. Calls with less than six to 12 months expiry are garbage. So even though GameStop was running up in the pre-market this morning and has obviously been crushed at the open, it doesn't mean the squeeze is over. I do think GameStop and AMC will steadily increase in price over the next few weeks and the next few months now that GameStop is profitable, which will end up putting so much pressure on the shorts that they end up being liquidated especially because JP Morgan and Zero Hedge is expecting the current banking crisis to continue getting worse. Also guys, if you haven't already, be sure to join me over on Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, by signing up using the link in the description below. You can currently get up to 17 free stocks, entirely commission-free trading, free level two market data, and most importantly of all, Moomoo is very easy to use. They've got tons of technical indicators and advanced charting tools. And with Moomoo, you can also get entirely free 24-7 customer support, and you can also trade around the clock with their full extended trading hours. JP Morgan has said that a recession seems to be a certainty, given the banking crisis and the expectation for additional unknown unknowns to emerge. And they've said combined, this feels like another bear market rally rather than the beginning of a new bull market. 
JP Morgan is clearly expecting more bank fallout and effectively for the banking crisis to continue getting worse and for stocks to continue going lower, setting new lows. But obviously, as Peruvian Bull tweeted, he said that GameStop, Bitcoin, and effectively the rest of the meme stock basket are the ultimate hedge against the current systemic collapse. As I said, now that GameStop has turned profitable, it's effectively destroyed that short thesis, and many of these short sellers will be looking to get out of their short positions while the price turns against them. As GameStop is now profitable and has billions of dollars of cash on hand, just like AMC has billions of dollars of cash as well and will soon also be profitable, there is no reason for the shorts to continue shorting as these companies won't go bankrupt. Something else I found very interesting is the fact that Doug Sifu, the CEO of Virtue, is still trying to suggest that fake and synthetic shares is absolute nonsense. Which as Josh pointed out, he said, when people say that naked short selling isn't a thing, you have to wonder what side of the fence they're actually on. Because as Paul tweeted, UBS has already been caught by the financial authorities in Korea for naked short selling. He said the company placed orders in 2021 to sell 7.3 billion won worth of shares of a local company without even holding those shares. The Korea Times posted saying according to industry sources, the Securities and Futures Commission, SFC, a decision-making body under the top financial regulator, the Financial Services Commission, decided last Wednesday to impose fines of 2.1 billion won for UBS due to illegal short-selling practices. It says UBS AG was caught by the financial authorities for naked short selling. The company placed orders in 2021 to sell 7.3 billion won worth of shares of a local company without holding those shares. Not only did they not have those shares, but they also didn't borrow the shares to actually sell the shares short, effectively naked shorting. So obviously if this is something that happens in Korea, if it happens in China, if it happens in other countries around the world which have now banned naked short selling or banned short selling entirely, you can imagine that it definitely happens in the US. In fact, we've gathered so much proof over the last two years that naked shorting absolutely does exist, so it's a wonder how Doug Sifu and others still try and deny that it does exist. Again, it just goes to show exactly what side they're on if they're still trying to deny that naked shorting exists, because it's likely because they're committing naked shorting offences. And finally, as Hang Loose tweeted, the Credit Suisse annual report has just been released by the SEC, and it's no wonder the SEC stopped them from releasing it. As Hang Loose tweeted, he said in just one year, their liquidity dropped by almost $100 billion, and customer deposits also dropped by $160 billion. Credit Suisse's annual report shows that customer deposits fell in 2020 and 2021 from 390 or 392 billion down to only 233 billion. On top of that, their trading assets fell massively from 157 billion down to only 65 billion, and their cash on hand also fell from 164 billion down to only 68 billion. Last year, Credit Suisse was losing money hand over fist, and it's no wonder the SEC tried to prevent Credit Suisse from releasing this financial report. Either way, obviously Credit Suisse did end up collapsing until it was rescued or purchased by UBS, who's now complaining that they don't actually want the deal to go through. I can imagine if Credit Suisse did release this report, it would have collapsed in under 24 hours, potentially causing even more damage. But it goes to show that if even Credit Suisse's deposits fell from 392 billion down to 233 billion in a globally systemic important bank, you can only imagine the disastrous impact it's been having on these regional banks as well. I'm sure it also won't be long until First Republic also ends up collapsing. First Republic and JP Morgan are still struggling to find a buyer or even still struggling to figure out a way to save the bank. And therefore, I'm sure it's only a matter of days until we have the next wave of the banking crisis where we end up seeing even more regional banks going under as well. And obviously, when that happens, I'm sure it won't be long until we see the stock market falling further and effectively see GameStop and AMC rising higher as natural market hedges. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.